This is the most important part of woven wire mesh. Not sure what I mean? Let me zoom out a bit. It's not about the wire diameter, it's not about the alloy, it's not even about the weave type, no. It's about the space in between all of that. It's all about the opening right here. Woven wire mesh is all about mesh count, which is not what this episode is about. It's actually about aperture size, which is constantly overlooked by mesh count. But honestly, aperture size is a way more important building block to woven wire mesh. So what is aperture size? Right this way. Aperture size is the center distance between the inside of two parallel wires. It could be between two warp wires like this, or two weft wires like this. Either way, it's all about determining the size and shape of the opening. Pretty important, right? And since in the first episode we covered wire diameter, I should say that if one wire diameter is bigger than the other, it actually doesn't complicate anything because the aperture is calculated always from the inside of the wires. But the shape that the aperture determines is pretty straightforward. Their square aperture, which is when both the warp and weft measurements are the same, they just form a square. Then there's the rectangular openings. If the opening is longer than it is wide, then it's called oblong. If the opening is wider than it is long, then it's called broad. Then there's something called zero aperture, which is when the aperture specs are super close together. So if you look at it top down, it doesn't really look like there are any openings, but if you look at it from an angle, there actually are these really small openings hidden within the crevices of the warp and weft wires. <laughs> and that's a uh, woven wire filter cloth, which I'll elaborate on in, in just a minute. So why does there have to be different aperture sizes and shapes? It's all about the particles. The world of particle size analysis exclusively deals with square mesh. The square mesh is installed in a separating instrument called a test sieve. The test sieves can be stacked on top of each other with the coarsest mesh being on the top, coarsest meaning largest, and the finest mesh, the smallest, being on the bottom. The assorted particles that need to be separated are poured into the top sieve. And through the use of a sieve shaker, they're sorted into the sieve that matches the particle's size. Now the reason why test sieves use square mesh is because particle size analysis is one of the most heavily regulated industries in the world. World. It's crazy. It's used a lot in the food and pharmaceutical industry because it's really, really important that the particles are the exact same size every time. And woven wire mesh has the incredibly tight tolerances that those industries need. And the really nice thing about using mesh with only a square aperture means that it simplifies the standards and makes it easier to start testing particles. And very importantly, square mesh gives a particle of any shape the best chance to find an opening. Using an oblong or broad aperture shape would only work well for ovoid or oblong shapes like uh, like rice. But rice can find an opening through a square opening, so it just kind of makes sense to standardize sieves for a square aperture. Now, for rectangular openings, you'll find a lot of that in the aggregate industry. If you care about the width of the mesh and not so much the length, then you can use a type of mesh called ton cap. Ton cap is short for tonnage capacity. The reason why you'd want to use ton cap is to make the process faster. The larger the opening, the more throughput, right? Now let's say we're screening sand. The ton cap will be vibrating and the sand will be sliding down and bouncing off of the wires to find the opening. And since there's not as many warp wires to bounce off of, they'll find the openings much quicker than a square aperture. And you may have noticed that the weft wire is actually a larger diameter than the warp wire, which gives it extra strength. Hence tonnage capacity, ton cap. But Andrew, come on, what's zero aperture for? Water filtration. Water filtration deals with tiny particles, a lot of particle buildup, and usually a lot of pressure, which kind of basically makes it impossible to use a, a square mesh weave. In order to filter particles that are like 15 micron in diameter, the wire diameter for a square mesh with a 15 micron opening would be very, very small. Ergo, very brittle. The mesh would completely bend and the openings would be distorted or just break entirely. And depending on how many particles are in the water. The larger openings that don't go through the mesh would kick onto the surface of the mesh, which adds weight and would distort the mesh. And so that's where zero aperture mesh comes into play, AKA woven wire filter cloth. The opening isn't made by the distance between the center of two wires. The opening is made by making one wire bigger than the other. Take a look at this filter cloth. The openings on a square mesh would be right here. But with woven wire filter cloth, they're actually underneath the wire right here. Here it is from the side. So, like I said in the last episode, the way to control the opening size is by making the warp wire larger or smaller than the weft wire, not by making the openings further apart from each other. And plus, the definition of aperture size only really works if you're able to look at an opening head on. And since filter cloth isn't really the case, then it's a zero aperture opening. But because of the complex weave pattern, the wire diameter can actually be a lot larger than a square mesh weave, but with the same opening size. This adds a lot of durability to find particles that are 
they're gonna have a lot of buildup on the mesh and have a lot of pressure. But how the heck do I calculate aperture size? You can't just clamp down on the wires with some calipers. You need to measure the inside of the wires. Well, depending on the size of the mesh, you actually can use calipers. But you're not using the lower jaws, you're using the upper jaws. Which is essentially the inverse of what the lower jaws do. All you have to do is separate the upper jaws until they're on the inside of the parallel wires to get your measurement. And make sure you're measuring at the centermost point of the wires. So as you can see, this opening's aperture is about 10.04 millimeters, or if you push this button, 0.393 inches. Now here's the real question. How the heck do I measure something smaller than that? What if the aperture size is like one millimeter or, or 20 micron? <laughs> Well, if that's the case, you could use a high magnification camera that can help you calculate basically anything you want, but honestly, it's kind of cheating. It's actually not, it's actually super cool, but uh, <laughs> obviously not everybody has something like this, so. So the normal way to find the opening size, the aperture size, is to calculate it by using a little bit of math. So if you want to find the aperture size, you're going to need two numbers. One you already know, and that's the wire diameter. So let's say the wire diameter for this is 0 0.0045 inches. Now, the other number we need is determined by the mesh count, uh, which we'll be covering in the next episode. But for now, let's just say our mesh count is 100. So all you do is put the mesh count here, one over 100, minus the wire diameter. And that's it. The aperture is 0 0.0055 inches. And if we just multiply that by 25.4 to get that in millimeters, to get 0.1397 millimeters, multiply that by 1,000, and that's basically 140 microns, if we round up just a little bit. So let's go crazy and find an even smaller opening. This is a 635 mesh, which is so, so incredibly small. And the wire is only 0 0.0008 inches in diameter. So if we go one divided by 635, and if we subtract that into 0 0.0008 inches, we get the incredibly tiny opening size of 0 0.00077 inches. And if we multiply that by 25.4, and then again by 1000, we get 20 micron. Remember, the human hair is 50 micron. We're under half of that. And finally, how in the world do I calculate the aperture of a zero aperture mesh? But there's still an opening, right? The opening for filter cloth is completely dictated by something called geometric pore size, which we'll be covering two episodes from now. So stay tuned. And that is aperture size. We now possess the very foundation of woven wire mesh. Without wire diameter, there is no aperture. And without aperture, there is no mesh. Except for filter cloth, but that's a whole thing. But you may have noticed that when we were calculating aperture size, we came across something called mesh count. So what is mesh count? Well, uh, maybe check out the next episode. The uh, title might surprise you. It's Mesh Count. So make sure to stay tuned. So glad you stopped by, and I'll see you around in the next episode.